Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the performance of the all new Ryzen 7 5700G APU. As it sits right now, the 5700G is only available through OEMs. AMD did mention that they will be releasing this for uh, custom builds later on down the road. But right now, you can only get it through OEMs or gray market on eBay. And I couldn't find anything on eBay. So I did a little more searching for pre-built using the 5700G. And lo and behold, HP just released one. And my local Office Depot actually had one in stock. They were on sale for $550, so I went ahead and picked it up. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I do a lot with integrated graphics over here, and I've been really excited about getting my hands on this one, because this is based on Zen 3 architecture, and from the benchmarks I've seen so far, we're getting some really good single-core and multi-core performance out of this thing. Now, when you face this off against, let's say, the 4700G, we do have a higher base clock and a higher boost clock, but the integrated Radeon 8 graphics are actually running at a lower clock, 2000 megahertz versus 2100 megahertz. And with this unit here, I can't do any overclocking because this is an OEM unit, but definitely stay tuned to the channel because as soon as I get a BIOS update that supports this 5700G, we will be doing some CPU and GPU overclocking. But in this video, we're going to check it out just like it sits in its stock form. So as for specs on this unit, obviously we have that 5700G, a 256GB NVMe SSD, and 16GB of DDR4 RAM running in single channel. But don't worry, we will be swapping this out to dual channel RAM before we get into testing. First thing I did was just pull this heatsink off, and given that this is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU running at a boost clock up to 4.6GHz, this does look like a pretty small CPU cooler, but uh, it actually handles it quite well. And here's a look at that 5700G. I actually kind of wanted to just get down here and make sure it was running a 5700G because it seems a little fast that these came to market. But as you can see here, this is as advertised. So this video is all about the APU, not really reviewing the HP system itself. We're just going to be running this at the stock frequencies because we can't do any overclocking. But what we have here is that AMD Ryzen 7 5700G based on Zen 3 architecture. 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock 3.8 GHz with a boost up to 4.6. We also have those built-in Radeon 8 graphics at 2000 MHz. And like I mentioned, we will be swapping the single channel RAM out for dual channel. We're going to stick with 16 gigs. I have two 8 gig sticks running at 3200 MHz. That's the maximum supported by this motherboard here. But as a lot of you already know, running these APUs with dual channel RAM makes a huge difference. So now I just need to reassemble this unit. I'm going to throw some new thermal paste on this thing, and we'll get right into some testing. Alright, so here we are. This came pre-installed with Windows 10 Home. As you can see, we have that new Ryzen 7 5700G, 8 cores, 16 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz, and the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. Now, when it comes to these graphics, one of the main things I always like to check with these uh, OEMs is that that GPU can clock up all the way. So from CPU Z here, I'll just head over to graphics. At idle, we're around 400 megahertz on that Radeon 8. Let's go ahead and put a load on it. 2000. And with this setup here, it will stick at 2000 while you're gaming. You'll see that in just a second. But first thing I wanted to do was run some benchmarks on this unit. I kind of wanted to face this off against the 4700G. So first up, we have the Blender BMW render test. On the 5700G, we came in at 47 seconds. That 4700G was 51 seconds. And if we take a look at the older 3400G, 2 minutes and 20. But keep in mind, that's a 4-core, 8-thread CPU. Moving over to Geekbench 5, I was blown away by the single-core score of the 5700G, coming in at 1,557, and we're so close to that 8,000 range on the multi-core. And comparing this to the 4700G, as you can see, that single-core performance is way ahead of it. And keep in mind, both of these CPUs are running in their stock configuration. There's no overclocking going on whatsoever. Moving over to Cinebench with the 5700G total multi-core score, 13,612. And when I tested it on the 4700G in the stock configuration, it came in with an 11,470. So we also have an uplift over here. Now it's time to check out the GPU performance of this new Radeon 8. For 3D Mark Night Raid, we came in with a 16,210, and if we take a look at the older 4700G, 15,325. And remember, the GPU is actually clocked 100 MHz higher on that 4700G. 
With Fire Strike, we came in with a 3486, and finally, Time Spy, with a 1416. But now it's time to see how this APU performs with real world gaming. First up, we have Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, low settings. We're getting an average of 61 FPS. On the 4700G, we actually only got an average of 53 FPS with the kind of exact same setup, 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM, running in a very similar HP system. Next up, CSGO, 1080p, medium settings. We got an average of 115 FPS by the end of this run, and on the 4700G, we had an average of 103 FPS. I mean, this could definitely come down to different variables, but it's looking like we're getting a little better performance out of the 5700. I also wanted to test Street Fighter V. Unfortunately, even at low settings 1080p, this would be at about 54 FPS, so I did have to drop this down to 900p, but I was able to take it up to medium settings, and we're getting constant 60. Overwatch, 1080p, medium settings, we got an average of 81 FPS. It's definitely playable like this, and it looks pretty good. When it comes to Fortnite, we're running this at 1080p with the new performance settings on, but we have textures on high, and we got an average of 83 FPS out of it. Here's GTA 5 at 1080p, normal settings. By the end of this one, we have an average of 71 FPS on the board. Never really had good luck with Doom Eternal on these integrated graphics, be it AMD or Intel, so we're at 720p, low settings with 80% resolution scale. We got an average of 54 FPS. I was hoping we could hold 60 like this, but you might have to drop that scale down a bit more. And finally, at least for this video, we have Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low settings, 80% resolution scale. We got an average of 31 FPS. Not great by any means, but remember, these are integrated graphics. And before we wrap this first 5700G video up, I wanted to take a small look at emulation. Now, I will have a full emulation video coming up with this APU very soon, so keep an eye on the channel. But here we have RPCS3, the PS3 emulator, running Skate 3 at 60 FPS. When it comes to this emulator, it really loves those extra cores and it loves those extra threads. We have plenty of them with the 5700G, and it's handling it just fine. So far, so good. I'm a big fan of the 5700G. I can't wait to get into some more testing, but we're kind of limited with this base OEM system. What I'm waiting for is a BIOS update for some of my B550 boards so we can get in there and overclock this GPU and add some faster RAM. That way we can really open this thing up and we will see a significant jump in CPU and GPU performance once we get this into a platform that can handle all of that.
But the way it's sitting right now in its OEM form factor and that 3200 megahertz RAM, this APU is an absolute monster when it comes to APUs. This is definitely the best one that I've tested on the channel so far. And even if we just took the integrated graphics out of the equation and just looked at this as a CPU, we are getting some stellar performance out of this thing. I got a lot more testing to do. This was just kind of my first look video at the 5700G. More will be coming down the road, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. And if there's any specific game or emulator you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And if you want to pick up an HP desktop like this with that 5700G, I'll leave a few links in the description, but I'd say your best bet would be wait until AMD really releases these to the public. But if you can't wait and you don't mind getting a pre-build, this is actually a really awesome performer. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.